In this video, we are gonna look at the unit six, lesson three practice problems. So number one, it just asks us to complete the table for the rule of this transformation. So remember, we're gonna say what happens to x, y. So x, y maps to what? So let's take a look and see if we can see a pattern um, here. So if you notice, um, oftentimes we look at does this go up by a certain number, down, does it double or triple? Um, so in this one, it's going down by five. In this next one, it's going up by one. So that's a little bit weird. So it doesn't look like it's going up by the same number or maybe multiplying. But if we take a look, we see the two ends up here. And then um, the three, the negative three ends up here. So they look like they just switched places. So let's see if that happens again. So the four is in the Y spot, the five is in the X spot. So these did just switch places. Um, so the Y is first and the X is second in our transformation. So then let's go ahead and fill in the rest of the table. So our X went to the second spot. So this one was a zero. These are just going to switch places. So the six is going to be first and the one is going to be second. So going backwards, this negative two was first and the negative one was second. So then the rule would be that Y first, uh, oops, and then X second. All right, so let's write a rule for this one. All right, let's write a rule for this one again. So let's take a look and see if we can come up with what's happening from the X's and the Y's. So five to two um, is a down three. So let's see if that happens again. So negative three to six is down three. One to negative two is down three. So it looks like our X, we are going to find our new X by subtracting three. And then our Y. So let's look at what happens to the Y. So for this one to negative one is down two. Um, but four to negative four is not down two. But they are opposites of each other. So one, negative one, four, negative four. So let's see if that keeps going. Negative two, positive two, negative four, positive four. So our Y is switching to the opposite. Number three, select all transformations that um, produce congruent images, which remember come from rigid motions or rigid transformations, which is not a dilation. A dilation stretches the object and makes it bigger or smaller. A horizontal stretch would be changing size. Reflection, good. Rotation, good. And translation, all of these are rigid motions. So they are going to, by definition, keep the shapes the same size. All right, let's take these transformation rules and first predict what the image is going to look like, then actually figure out um, the coordinates and draw it. So if we're just subtracting four from the X and one from the Y, that should just be this exact same triangle just moved. Um, if we flip the X and the Y, maybe we're thinking it'll stay the same, but maybe just like a rotation. Um, thinking maybe it won't change the size but maybe because there's no multiplication, but maybe it will since we're switching them. We'll find out. Um, and then C, multiplying by one and a half to each one. So this one is going to change the size. It's going to make it one and a half times bigger, but still be that same shape. So let's do um, this first rule of just subtracting four and subtracting one from each of these values. So let me just write down um, what the coordinates are. So A is the coordinate two, three. B is the coordinate four, two. And C is the coordinate three, five since this one wanted us to um, compute the coordinates of each image as well as draw it. Um, 
So we'll go ahead and figure these out. So for point A prime for this rule, we'll subtract four from two. So that's gonna be negative two and then subtract one from the Y. So three minus two or three minus one is two. B prime, subtract four from the X. So we'll get zero, subtract one from the Y and we'll get one. And then for C prime, subtract four from the X, we'll get negative one, and then subtract one from the Y and we'll get four. So then we can plot these points. Um, negative two, two, that should have gone over four and down one, which it did. Um, B would be zero, one, should have gone over four, down one, which it did. And then C, negative one, four, again, should have gone over four to the left and down one which it did. So then here's our new shape using that transformation. So then we'll do um, the transformation where we just switch the X and the Y. So we're gonna go back to our original coordinates and we'll just switch. So we're gonna go three, two. B prime will be two, four. And C prime will be five, three. So let's see what happens to this. So three, two. Okay, and then two, four, and then five, three. And then we'll connect this. So we do get the same size um, shape. And in fact, this one is actually a reflection um, over the line y equals x. So it's actually a reflection over this line. And so it does keep it the same size. And then this last one, going one and a half times bigger. So for A prime, um, two times one and a half is three, three times one and a half is 4.5. B prime, four times one and a half is six, two times one and a half is three. And then C prime, three times one and a half is 4.5. And five times one and a half is 7.5. So we can just plot these. So three um, and then four and a half, six, three, and 4.5, um, 7.5. So that one's gonna be off the grid a little bit. And then we can just connect that. Oops, let me get this to be a solid line again. And then we see that we have a shape that's one and a half times bigger. Um, did, we, did I plot one of these? Wrong. Let me see. Um, oh, whoops. Wait, okay, so three, 4.5, three, and then four and a half, 7.5. Okay, so this one is, oh, I was looking at the blue one. I was trying to see that they weren't parallel, but I was looking at the wrong shape. So, okay, so we, we see that it's just one and a half times bigger and these pieces stay um, parallel to each other. I was looking at the blue shape. All right, so then we still have these parallel sides here. Um, so it's just a dilation one and a, whoops one and a half times um, bigger from the origin. All right, then number five, a cylinder has a radius of three inches and a height of five. There's a cone that has the same radius and height. Find the volume of the cylinder and the volume of the cone. So for the volume of a cylinder, remember it's area of the base times the height. And then for a cone, it's the area of the base times the height and then just divided by three. Now, recognize that these have the same base because it said it has the same radius and the same height. So the base area is going to be the same and the height is going to be the same. So once we calculate the volume of the cylinder, we'll be able to just divide by three and we'll have the um, volume of the cone. So area of the base here, um, pi times the radius squared, so pi times three squared. So the base area is nine pi, and I'm just gonna leave it like that. And then the height is five. 
So for the volume, um, we will just go ahead and multiply those. So the base area was nine pi and then times five. So we end up with 45 pi inches cubed for the volume of the cylinder. And then we can just divide that by three. So 45 pi divided by three to get the volume of the cone. So the volume of the cone is going to be 15 pi inches cubed. And then what fraction of the cylinder's volume is the cone? So the cone is one third um, of the cylinder since we divided it by three. All right, the number six, we're going to reflect the triangle um, over the line x equals negative two. So let's draw that line in there. So x equals negative two is a vertical line here through negative two. Um, so let's reflect this triangle across that line. So we're just going to count how far each point is from the line. So A is three points from the line to the right. So we're going to go three to the left. C is one, two, three, four, five to the right. So we're going to go one, two, three, four, five to the left. And then B is four to the right. So we're going to go four to the left. And then there is our new triangle. And it wants us to label um, these as A prime, B prime, and C prime. Then we're going to reflect that new triangle, A prime, B prime, C prime, over the line X equals zero and call it A double prime, B double prime, C double prime. So let's plot the line um, X equals zero. So X equals zero is our Y axis. So now we're going to be counting to the Y axis and flipping over um, to get our new image. Um, you can also look at the X coordinate because now the X coordinate here is zero. So it's just going to be the opposite. So A is at negative five. So A double prime is going to be at five. C prime is at negative seven. So C double prime is going to be at positive seven. B prime is at negative six. So B double prime will be at positive six. And then that will get us our new triangle there. And then we can just um label those pieces so this was a double prime c double prime and b double prime so what is the trans what is the single transformation that took a b c to a double prime b double prime c double prime so if we look at that we can see that it's just a translation to the right Okay, so just count that one, two, three, four units. So just a translation to the right, four units. And so you can type that out um, like this as well or write that out like this as well. So you could say translation um, along the directed line segment from zero, zero to um, four zero, that would be moving it four units to the right. So you could say translate four units to the right or use this language as well. All right, in this construction, A is the center of one circle, B is the center of another circle. Explain why all of those um, listed segments are congruent to each other. So if we take a look here um, in this figure, so we do have um, A is the center and B is the center. So AB is actually the radius of both triangles, or sorry, both circles. So that means that we have congruent circles, okay? So since, so the, con the circles are congruent, which means the radii of every single one of those um, Every single radii in there is going to be congruent. So if we look um, at each of these lines, so AC is a radius of this circle A. BC is a radius of 
circle B. AD is the is a radius of circle A. Um, BD is a radius of circle B. And then AB is a radius of both. And so if I just kind of draw, let me draw this circle over here, orange, to highlight that more, that this circle. So if I go A to B, that creates that circle. Okay, and then A, A C, and AD are radii of that circle. Um, and then circle B has a radius of BA, which creates that circle. And then you've got BC and BD being radii of that. Um, so why are these congruent? They are congruent because they are all radii of um, congruent circles.